lettings fee ban what the hell are you going to do to compete when 15 20 percent of your income is going to be going so i took the trip up to the northeast to see john paul from castle dean who won the sunday times award how many times uh, best in north last four years excellent and nationally i think it was 14. excellent and if anyone's going to know the answer on what he's going to do because how many office network have you got john uh, six six offices I'd love to know what your plans are on what you plan to do with regard to the fee ban and any advice that you can give to all the agents out there in letting land in the UK. No pressure then. No pressure at all, <laughs> my friend. Uh, we're doing a few things. So that the most common thing or the most easiest thing is to actually save money. So we're really economising, we're, we're looking um, within the business, what can we do to save money? Um, we're trying to be more efficient, we're trying to use technology, we're automating the business. Um, we're just saying fixed flow, brief your market, um, which aren't cheap by the way. However, if you do... You do get what you pay for on this Massively, one, massively, and you've got to use them and that's what we, we, we're looking to do straight away. Um, so we're using IT, we've got in touch with Rentman and we're using online portals for landlords and tenants to log in to get the statement so we're not getting the, I didn't get my statement and so we're saving, we're trying to buy back the time of our staff which will allow them to increase the size of their portfolio and that, that income is effectively just profit on the bottom line. So what you're doing is you're investing in things to make your life more efficient Yeah. to enable your staff more time to go out there and get more business to replace the income that way. Yeah, and then, yeah, exactly right. So that's the first thing, being more efficient and automate. The second thing is we're prospecting a lot harder, a lot more direct marketing. Do you, do you think letting agents are good at that? No, they don't do it. They're not. The, the biggest thing for me is consistency. So if we're consistent at doing something, we will get better. That's just, that's a neurological fact. That's not me making it up. It's, a, it's actually a mm. process called myelinization. If, you, if, you, if anyone's ever bored and want to lose a couple of hours of your life. So <laughs> have a look at it. The more we do something, the better we will get at it. So with our managers, we teach them how to prospect. So the we're doing it an hour a day. We're stepping that up to an hour and a half to two hours a day. And we're, we're definitely seeing the, the reward straight away. And the third thing is we're going on a bit of a, quite an aggressive acquisition trail. So as we were chatting before, we've put a, um, an offer in on quite a large lettings and estate agency up, up here. Um, and we're looking to buy two or three a year for the next couple of years. So we're trying to consolidate. And with that, you'll get a further additional economies of scale on the bottom line. Okay, let's assume that our, the people watching this don't have a big checkbook. <coughs> and let's come back to prospecting. Obviously, don't not giving too much away because we want your competitors in the northeast <laughs> to know exactly what you're doing. But is there any tips and guidance you can give from, yeah. from in terms of prospecting? Yeah, don't make it about you, make it about the person. So when you're speaking to people, don't talk, tell them how great you are. Ask simple questions like, what are you looking for in an agent? So the biggest mistake we did when we first started was we wrote 10 things to choose Castle Dean. We had investors in people gold, we had all these awards, we had one portfolio manager, all the shiny bells and whistles that we thought we would want if we were a landlord. But in actual fact, a lot of the people we were prospecting just wanted the statement sent on time. They just wanted the money in the bank. So instead of doing a 10 minute speech, war and peace about how great you are and at the end of the 10 minutes you can hear them yawn start to say so Mr Landlord what are you looking for in an agent what was what was your agent not good at before and are you targeting uh, landlords that are like half you know uh, between uh, tenant leaving and going in or just halfway through a tenancy everything anything's fair game if, if it's a landlord it's fair game for us so you know um, we hope everything's going well if it's not going well give us a shout um, unfortunately there's, there's not a lot of great letting agents out there so for a letting agent to uh, to not be great it's quite easy to, to, to take the business off them. What do you have some form of like a CRM system to because I, I'm a firm believer that people buy from people mm. and, it, and it's all about building relationships it is, yeah. is uh, what do you have systems in place because no landlord's going to give you their business on the first phone call no, are no, they? No no definitely not no so we've got a we, we use Rentman for our property management software but we've got a bespoke piece of kit um, called Let's Manage and that's, uh, that, that helps us when we've got to phone people up, what the last call was, we might just send a letter out. It's just a normal CRM, I suppose. And who's actually doing these calls? Are you getting like the negotiators or the property managers to do it or the actual branch managers to do it? Branch managers. So the branch managers don't manage any properties. They literally just manage the branch. What makes it easy to manage a branch is because of the systems that we've got in place. So therefore, other than, uh, you know, monthly one-to-ones and appraisals, etc., and, you know, they shouldn't have a lot to do. So the prospect in two hours a day does take up quite a lot of their time. How do you manage that? Because it's very easy to hide behind, I've done the prospecting. Do you have some form of check as, a, as an MD to make sure everything's in place? 
I don't, but my M, my MD does. Your MD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my MD. <laughs> yeah. So we've got we've got access to. Um, you've got one. You've got two actually. You got one at work, haven't you? And yeah, and I've got senior, senior management, management back here. Yeah, yeah, I've this, got a senior management. This one's well. more scary. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've got Adele, who's my MD, who basically runs the business, and she's got access to um, the, our piece of prospecting software, and we can map out not only how much work have they done, but also the results. You know, let's be honest. It doesn't matter how many times you kick a football unless you score a goal, you're useless. And th that's the way we look at it. You know, if you're if you're making 20, 30, 40 phone calls a day and you're not getting results, then what is it? Is it a skill or a will? Do you need upskilling, or are you choosing not to do your job in a yeah. correct manner? Because people don't like the word no, do they? They're just yeah. so afraid of it. Yeah. How have you trained that so they don't? Because let's be honest, you're going to get an awful lot of no's before mm. you get a yes. Mm. Is that mindset? Total mindset. We we call it personal mental fitness. So fitness is actually how quickly you recover from something and it's always you recover from the negative. So in sport, because obviously I'm a big sports fan, it's you know the big <laughs> it's the big hit in rugby, it's the getting balled out in cricket, whatever it is. And it's the no in prospecting. So it's like put the phone down, just get on with it. Don't worry about it. You know, we say we'll phone them and we'll continue contacting them unless they literally either give us the business or specifically tell us to leave them alone. Because I'm a firm believer is it doesn't really matter what the message you get across as long as you drip feed them mm -hmm. Uh, you, you keep in contact with them, you build a relationship up with them because people do buy from people. Um, I know uh, you use uh, local property market reports. They're a great way to, as an excuse to ring people, aren't they? Oh, massive, massive. So you're becoming the trusted agent in their, in their area. You're becoming the expert. So you're not just sending out the, come use me because we're a great type of leaflet. You're giving them some information. People want to feel as though that they are privileged, that you're giving them the yeah. information. And by that, they're going to go to you if they ever need to sell. Um, those great people at the Property Academy have just produced a report, uh, more from the estate agency side, but I think there's a lot of synergy between mm -hmm. lettings and estate agency. And they asked what was the most uh, primary reason why you chose a particular agent, and they said it, it was the agent who had the best local knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people will win on the Purple Bricks mm -hmm. online game. I mean, what's your thoughts on on that and where that's going because we haven't spoken about that yet because it is a big thought mm. that a lot of people are worried about we've got the as i said the, the tenant fees going and mm. we've got the online agents that are charging well quite frankly cheap as chips fees yeah. what's, what's your thoughts on those uh, there's definitely a place for them so you know to like with everything you've got you've got the you know the aston martins the mercedes and you've got your, your little fiats and stuff yeah i call it the supermarkets yeah so, yeah but anyway same thing isn't it oh definitely so there's definitely a place for them it's just how you adapt and how you evolve your game to fit in with theirs. So they can offer online stuff, you can offer online stuff because there's, there's a wonderful thing called Tinder Web out there. Is it? Apparently so. It's even cut, <laughs> got this far north. That's it? Yeah. So if you, you get yourself on the inter internet um, and make sure that you know, you're performing as well as they are on that, but also if you've got a branch and you've got that branch presence, as you quite rightly said, it's a people business, you should have the edge. And if there was one piece of advice that you give to any letting and estate agent today for the future, what would it be? And, and tell, the, tell the people at um, home. Don't sit in your laurels. Just make sure that you're, you're always adapting, you're always evolving the business. Um, learn, make sure you put it into practice um, and just keep plugging away.